Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about the different and most common chess tournament types in online as well as over the board chess in individual chess. Let's get started! The first tournament type we are going to be talking about is round robin tournaments. Round robin tournaments are tournaments where all the players in the tournament have to play against each other, and the winner will be determined by the player who wins the most games. I'm going to show you how the pairings could work with an even and odd number of participants in a tournament. If there is any even-numbered player tournament, like four, named A, B, C, and D, we might pair A with B, and D might be paired with C. In the second round, we could pair A with D, and pair C with B. We can go like this in a triangle way, until all the players have played with each other. So in this case, the tournament would end after three rounds, with either A, B, C, or D being the winner. As you can see, the pairings go in this kind of shape. This, however, was with an even number of players. How about an odd number of players? Well, let's choose three. We can see that we can have all the players have an opponent, so we will have to give a bye to one player in every round. Let's say A and B get paired with each other and C gets a bye. The triangle rule can still be applied, and in the next round, A will be paired with C, and B will get a buy. You can probably figure out the next round easily. That's basically a basic explanation of how the pairings can be paired. However, you may be asking, how do they decide the winner if two or more players have the same score? Well, if two players have the same score, then whoever won the match between these two players will be the winner. If there are three players who have the same score, it depends on the event rules on where you're playing, but you can have another round robin between the three players. Also, another type of tournament, double round robin tournament. It is basically the same as a round robin, except you play another round robin. Let's now go to our next tournament type. The next tournament type are Swiss tournaments. Your first chess tournament was probably a Swiss tournament, and it is the most common type of tournament. It is widely used around the world. The great thing about it is that it tests the person's real skill. This is an example of a Swiss tournament pairing. What do you notice? Well, you can see that the pairings are based on the total points in the tournament so far. However, sometimes, like on board 20, there are no other pairs that can be made. And if there are two players that have already played against each other, they can't be paired again. Anyways, how exactly do these tournaments work? Well, the pairings are paired by the number of points, and whoever in the end has the most points wins the tournament. Again, if there's a tiebreaker, then there's a sort of different approach. There's a lot of different types of tiebreaks for this, which are ranked on precedence on which tiebreak to go through first. The tiebreak with the highest precedence is winner over the other, or direct encounter. 
which is basically the same thing as the first tiebreak of the round robin match, which is that if there are two players with the same score, if they played each other in the tournament, then the winner of that match will be having the place over the other person. The next tiebreak system that will be taken into account is either the buccal system or victory tiebreak. It depends on the tournament you're playing, and some tournaments prefer buccals because it is a real tiebreak and actually determines who should be the one that overtakes the other, while others prefer victory to avoid match-fix draws. Let me tell you about buccals first. Buchholz is basically deciding whether your opponents in the tournaments were strong or weak. It looks at the it looks at your opponents and sees how they did in the tournament and decides based on that information. Basically, if you drew against a good player, then that would be recorded and it would be a good thing in the future tiebreak system. Victory, on the other hand, sees how many wins you have, no matter who you play against. For example, if you have two draws instead of one win, that is a bad thing in the tiebreak system. This is usually used to encourage players not to just match-fix games to a draw, but fight on in the game. These are the two main tiebreaks in Swiss tournaments, and they're really important, especially in top games where tiebreak may change one's life. There's also a Sonneborn Burger tiebreak, which is basically the sum of the scores the opponent has defeated and half the scores of the players whom he has drawn. Basically, if you beat a player that had two points in a tournament, then you would add that to the sum. And if you drew against a player with four points in a tournament, then you would have half the four, which becomes two, and add that to the sum. Of course, there are more tie breaks, but these are the most common ones. Now, let's go on to the next tournament type. The next type is being considered somewhat tournament-based. There are simultaneous exhibitions. Simultaneous exhibitions are basically when a player plays two or more players simultaneously. Now, you may be thinking, how is this even possible? Well, let me show you a diagram of how it might look in real life. Basically, the person in the middle is to go around all the players and play against all of them. Normally, the player in the middle is like a really strong grandmaster, and so the amateur players are fighting for a draw or win to be given a prize. However, not all of these exhibitions have prizes and can also be used for training. Anyways, let's move on to the next tournament type. Arena tournament. tournaments are based on online chess. Otherwise, it would go too crazy in real life. Arena tournaments are fast and fun-filled tournaments, but do not really test a person's real skill. This is because it is in an arena, and there is not really a proper structure, and anyone can just join and leave a tournament at any time. There is already a set time for the tournament and you have to win as many games as you can in that limited time. Well, you might be thinking, how are the games even played? Well, the games are paired by rating. This is not such an effective pairing strategy, as a player's online rating doesn't really match up with their actual strength, but what else pairing system can there be? There's not really any order. In Lee Chess, each game you win will give you an amount of points, depending on your win streak. To start off in Lee Chess, you will be given two points for each win, but if you have a win streak of two wins in a row, you win your game, then you get four points added to your final score. 
If you have a draw and you don't have a streak, then you'll be given one point. And if you do have a streak of two or more wins, then you'll get two points, but you will lose your win streak. Also, there are different rules regarding Lee Chess, draw rules, which differ depending on the tournament. But one rule for draws is that if you have a draw streak, then after a while you won't get any points when you draw and get points. Because Lee Chess wants to discourage too many draws and match fix draws. If you lose your game, you won't get any points. The winner is determined by the person who has the most number of points. The tiebreak is basically determined by the performance rating of a player in the tournament. Now, let's go on to the next popular type of tournament. Not only in chess, but in other sports as well. These are knockout tournaments. Knockout tournaments are exactly what they sound like. A game can knock out a player out of a tournament, and the winner goes on to the next round, with players being eliminated on the way. Here's a potential diagram with random names of random people. This kind of a diagram is usually the normal layout with a bunch of people playing each other. In this case, Bob, Marcus, Jeff, John, Ronnie, Henry, Steve, and Tim. So Bob and Marcus will play against each other. Jeff and John will match up, Ronnie and Henry, and so on. After match one, we will move up and face another. So more and more people are getting knocked out until the finals come in, where two people face each other, which in this case is John and Tim. The winner will obviously be determined by whoever wins the game, but what if two players have a draw? Well, the matches are usually longer than one game, but if it still happens to be a draw, another type of game called Armageddon is going to be played. In this type of game, there is no option of a draw, so it makes either a win or a loss. The way Ermagadan does that is by saying that if a game has been drawn, black wins. To make it even, it also says that the white player will, give, will be given a one-minute advantage, whether it's six minutes to five minutes or five minutes to four minutes or anything. Therefore, it makes the game a little more fair, I guess. So imagine John and Tim had a draw in their match, and therefore a Magadan was played, and John happened to win. So that's basically how knockout tournaments work. They're usually played at a top level. Okay, I could keep on going with even more tournament types. But these are generally the most common tournament types in online and over-the-board chess. The next one is not very common, but I think it will be worth knowing, just for fun. It is blindfold chess. Tournaments. Now, I think that this is, although is not considered a tournament yet in my dictionary, it has potential. In online chess, how it might work is that there will be a board with no pieces on it, and you will have to move the pieces on the blank board. In over the board chess, people can be blindfolded and play on special chess boards, or maybe talk to each other. There's so many different possibilities to hold a blindfold chess tournament. There can also be blindfold simultaneous exhibitions, which is basically the same as simultaneous exhibitions, except the guy in the middle against everyone is playing blindfolded. This is almost always the case when the person in the middle is a really, really strong title player, and the player I've seen so far is Magnus Carlsen doing this. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace!
La la 